so we will start the discussion on diodes uh, can anybody tell me uh, what the difference between diode and other components that you usually have been dealing with like resistors inductors capacitors anyone the direction matters Yes, because all the other devices that we have seen till now, like resistors, inductors, capacitors, it does not matter in which polarity you connect them, right? Both current can flow in both the directions. It is not that if you will reverse and put a, a, a resistor or an inductor, current will stop flowing from it. That means they are bi-directional devices, right? They are bi-directional devices. However, diode is made up of two materials any any junction diode is made up of two materials two different materials and those materials are not conductors they are semiconductors and that is why uh, we will see due to some mechanism that there is flow of current is restricted in the opposite direction and it is uh, it is possible only in one direction so before we go there let's take a quick background on uh, integrated circuits or ic's because we owe a great deal of all the modern advancement that we've seen in the past uh, three, four decades to integrated circuits, which are commonly known as ICs. So the first IC was developed by Jack Kilby while he was working in uh, at Texas Instruments in back in 1958. Okay, so this was uh, Jack Kilby, and uh, this is what he actually made. This was the first integrated circuit that he made, and as the name integrated circuit suggests, you have you can put multiple small circuits on one single board and that that is what makes it an integrated circuit okay so different functions can be done on a single platform becomes an integrated circuit okay uh, from there we have come a long long way when we talk about uh, in terms of in, uh, ic right and the processor and the speed and how compact and how many uh, circuits can we compress in a small small area we have come a long way. The, the broad topic or the broad area that we speak about when we talk about diodes or transistors that we'll be talking about is called solid state electronics. Okay, so what is solid state, state electronics? We are uh, in an earlier con context, like before in the 50s uh, and 40s, that time if they wanted to have a circuit that you know enables flow of current in one direction they had to use cathode rays and uh, uh, filaments then heat those filaments and let electrons flow and uh, so that was in in a different medium right solid state electronics as the name suggests we will have a solid device a physical material in which uh, due to abundance of certain charges or you know deficiency of certain charges we'll be able to make uh, uh, current flow and that is why this is called solid state electronics it's a hard crystal structure okay so as it says on the slide the construction of every discrete solid state electronic device or ic be begins with a semiconductor material of the highest quality and you already know that semiconductors are a special class of elements they have a conductivity between a good conductor and that of an insulator so most commonly, we will have semiconductors which have four electrons in their valence shell. And broadly speaking, semiconductor material can be of two classes. There's a single crystal semiconductor or a compound semiconductor. Okay. So can you name some semiconductor? Silicon. Silicon. Germanium. 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 Like a, you, you want to make a normal diode, junction diode, you will use silicon or germanium. But if you want to make a, a LED, you would use compound semiconductors. As the name suggests, photosensitive, meaning when light has to be emitted, uh, the band gap of these materials has to correspond to that frequency, isn't it? Now, how, how does an LED work typically? You would have to have some sort of recombination and when recombination takes place or uh, say energy corresponding to the band gap energy is released, you know that E is equal to HC by lambda. E is the energy, the band gap energy. HC by lambda, it's H and C are constants. So E and lambda have a very close relationship, right? So yes. corresponding to a particular band gap energy, you will be releasing a radiation 
of a particular bandwidth of a particular wavelength because silicon and germanium would have one particular band uh, gap which does not correspond to visible spectrum it, it that wavelength does not fall in the visible spectrum right but if you want to make a red green uh, blue led those colors un, un colors ke corresponding when you get hc by lambda that is equal to band gap energy something that will correspond that is more common in uh, compound semiconductors so the whole uh, the hero between uh, the application of any particular semiconductor device is the band gap energy which is dependent on the material and silicon and germanium are not those materials okay so for electronic devices the three commonly used semiconductors are germanium silicon and gallium arsenide so this these are how this is how the structure of uh, a silicon atom looks like this is how a gallium arsenide crystal looks like okay i'll be sharing these slides with you but again since this is not a physics course i'm not going too much into the details of these uh, topics you're free to read about them in the books that i've already uploaded then there are other uh, parameters of performances like uh, mobility which has more which has less again these have these are not relevant for the course of introduction to electrical engineering but i'm just kind of rushing through them in the interest of continuity okay so we see these are the band gap energies mentioned for germanium silicon and gallium arsenide these are two less these frequencies are two uh, these uh, band gap energies are two less to uh, actually fall in the visible spectrum that is why we cannot use these for light based applications okay okay so now we are in a pure semiconductor silicon lattice we see that we have four electrons in the valence shell everything is fine covalent bonds have been formed everything is fine right at 0 kelvin now at 300 kelvin however you will notice that because the temperature has increased a few of these bonds actually break few of these covalent bonds because they are sensitive to temperature at 0 kelvin everything is okay there are no free electrons no no charge carriers at, at all but at 300 kelvin that is at room temperature a few of these covalent bonds are broken a few okay uh at thermal equilibrium however the rate at which these bonds break and the rate at which they recombine is kind of the same so one can conclude that the concentration of free electrons at any given time free electrons means after a bond was broken a few electrons were lying here and there and few uh, vacancy of an electron is called a hole so we can say that a vacancy of an electron leaves back leaves behind a positive charge which i'm calling a hole and they are the they are kind of equal at thermal equilibrium because the temperature is not increasing or decreasing or anything nothing is happening and let that be called the intrinsic charge concentration i'm calling it ni okay Sub, subscript is i ni intrinsic charge concentration now the intrinsic charge concentration has this really very beautiful looking uh, uh, relationship with temperature okay so intrinsic charge uh, concentration and temperature have this relationship you do not have to remember or learn this relationship there is a point that i'm trying to make here and i'll come to that in in a second although per cubic centimeter we have 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 carriers but putting this in perspective of how many atoms there are per cubic centimeter there are 10 to the power 22 atoms proportional almost like i'm giving a ballpark here but 10 to the power 22 that means you have only one charge carrier per 10 to the power 12 atoms per centimeter cube so forget about 1.5 for for now this tells us that there is actually one carrier one free carrier per 10 to the power 12 atoms which is depressingly low yeah. okay and this will not help you uh, conduct a good amount of current at any temperature like at room temperature it will not if you increase the temperature of course then you don't need doping and because more number of bonds will break there'll be more free carriers everything will be fine but at room temperature this is not enough right which is why we need to add impurities to this kind of uh, a material so that even at room temperature we can we can kind of force uh, them to have 
one particular kind of charge carrier in abundance. This is what is called doping. And if you add a pentavalent impurity like phosphorus, which has five electrons in its valence shell, so four of them are going to make bonds with silicon. And this one guy is going to be left free to roam around. Okay, so this is a free electron which is donated by the impurity atom, which is phosphorus here. That means if you add a pentavalent impurity, you will have an abundance of uh, electrons. So pentavalent impurity can also be called a donor impurity. Once you do that, this becomes an n-type material because it is abundant in electrons which are negative. So N for negative, this is abundant. The second type, if you were adding trivalent impurity, bonds have to be made four, right? That means it's going to literally snatch one electron from another bond, take an electron, form a nice bond, but then this, this vacancy is going to be lonely and it will be roaming around freely. This vacancy, which is called a hole, in such case where you have a trivalent impurity, for example, say aluminium, this is going to give you an abundance in holes. Why having just normal semiconductor material was not enough, we had to add p-type, a donor or uh, acceptor impurities on to the semiconductor material which is pure and make them p-type or n-type so that at room temperature when they are triggered in certain way there can be a flow of charge like there will be abundance of free carriers to flow okay now the main topic of this discussion right now we were just talking about semiconductor we have not made a diode yet okay. so the main topic here is pn junction diode that means when you bring a p-type and an n-type semiconductor material together. This is the P-type material. This is the N-type material. When you bring them together, fuse them, what is going to happen? The P-type is abundant in holes. The N-type is abundant in electrons. They will have a tendency to run or rush towards the direction where their own concentration is less. Okay. This is what is called diffusion. Even in general, the word diffusion means whenever you have any quantity, when you have any quantity, it has a tendency to drift towards the direction where its own concentration is less. Okay. Say, for example, a gas will try to move in the direction where its concentration is less. Right. So it diffuses. So due to change in concentration, due to difference in concentration, these free carriers are going to try and move to each other they'll come together they will recombine and because of this however whatever is the flow of current because of this uh, uh, difference in concentration it's called diffusion current okay id this is one type of current once they have recombined they came together very excited recombined after recombination they've disappeared right there are no there are no free charge carriers available in this region, which was near the junction. Near the junction, however, after these electrons have recombined, there will be bound charges, which will be uncovered. There are no free mobile carriers available in this junction. All right, they have recombined. But electron coming from this side and recombining, so at this edge of the junction, you have this whole layer of positively charged bound ch uh, charges which have been uncovered, positively charged bound ions, you can call them. However, on the P side, because they were all holes, after recombination on the atom, there is this minus negative uh, bound charge which is exposed. Because of this, let me draw uh, it in a better way so that maybe it's a little more clearer. Okay, so we are at the junction. This was the P side abundant in holes this is the n side abundant in electrons uh, electrons and holes move towards each other recombined this, this is the junction part after they have recombined towards the p side i've got all these 
bound negative charges, negative ions exposed. On the end side, I've got all these positive bound charges. Because of these bound charges, remember that these are not free. They cannot move around to help in flow of current. Okay, they are bound, they are fixed. But because they exist, there will be an electric field in this direction from positive to negative inside. Electric field E. Because there's an electric field which is opposing, there cannot be any future, any further recombination. So these, these guys are stuck here and these guys are stuck here. There is literally a barrier between them. Right? There's a barrier between them. So this, because there's an electric field between these two layers, these two ends of the of the depletion layer, of course, there will be a difference in potential as well. So there is a potential like this, potential difference. This difference in potential, V0, potential of difference between the N side and P side, this V0 is called the barrier potential. Okay, it's called the barrier potential. And uh, this electric field occurs because there is a depletion of charges in this region. That is why this region is called, it's already written, it's called a depletion region. It is also called space charge region. So the point being that when right now there is no voltage, nothing has been connected, right? But at room temperature, so these two terminals, they are not connected to each other. There is no flow. That means net current. If I talk about net current, the net current right now is zero. That means when nothing is connected, this is an open circuit condition. The diffusion current and the drift current, drift current meaning you can say current corresponding to an electric field. Okay, because there will be thermally generated minority carriers in this region. Right now we have drawn only majority carriers, right? Okay, we did not really discuss majority and minority terminology as such. In whichever material, whatever is in excess, we'll call that as the majority carrier. So in N type, electrons are the majority carriers. However, it doesn't mean that few holes are not there. Few holes are there. Okay, but they are in minority. Now, within this depletion layer, there would be some thermally generated, like because at normally at temperature, we saw that at 300 Kelvin also, covalent bonds will be breaking, free electron hole pairs would continue to generate, but they will be very, very few in number, right? Now, because this electric field is in this direction, those thermally generated carriers will have a tendency to move in this direction. And that is what contributes to drift current. This IS is called drift current. Drift current is due to electric field in the depletion region. Diffusion current is due to difference in charge concentration. Right now in open circuit condition, nothing is connected. There is no flow of current. That means this diffusion current and this drift current should cancel each other out. Right? However, we also notice that because of this electric field, there would be a potential difference between this side and this side. That is what I just drew. This difference in potential, like I said, is called the barrier potential. This will be uh, a constant. At a given temperature, at least, it will be a constant and it will depend on the material that we are using. So if you're talking about silicon, it will be something. If you're talking about germanium, it's going to be something else. Okay, so remember that this N type and P type, they are both made of the same semiconductor, just doped with different material. Okay, so let us say that this is this is a silicon uh, uh, junction diode. Why it is called a junction diode? Because it is formed by like the whole the whole the hero of the whole story is this junction between these two materials. Okay, these two differently doped materials. 